What's going on world? Brand new episode of Royal Key there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm here at the Arkansas baseball facility with my guy, Justin. Justin, how you doing? Good, how you doing, George? Good I'm to see doing, you, man. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Now, I've heard from student athletes here, from staffers here, from the design firm, Jack Porter, that this is like the Taj Mahal of like baseball facilities. We like to think so, George. I know we'll talk about the uh, actual designs, but where does a recruit start when they go on this tour? This is obviously a good entrance and a wow factor, talking about our history and, and things of that nature. You know, this is obviously uh, kind of where we celebrate the tradition of uh, Razorback baseball. So it's uh, obviously a good starting spot. Now, before we get into the locker room, every program kind of bases its recruiting pitches on certain things, whether it be the history or, hey, we put everyone into the big leagues. Uh, what does Arkansas baseball hang their head on? Well, I mean, obviously tradition, you know, with our participation in College World Series over the years, obviously the rich tradition we have with uh, former Major League Baseball players, which obviously they can see right as they're coming in the door. Obviously, that's the goal of every kid that comes here, right? So why not put it right there for him to, you know, have the dream of being the next guy up on the board? This is spacious, man. As far as baseball locker rooms, I've never seen anything <laughs> like this. Truth be told, George, we had a nice locker room prior to this. Not obviously near this size, but that's one thing that we were very conscious about to make sure that we had ample size for them to hang out. You know, we want this to be their home away from home, essentially. And they spend so much time here, so we're going to take care of them. We were pretty intentful with the way that we designed the locker to give them space to hide things, but also display things as well. This is the hat area. He has the ability to lock this upper case, and he also has the ability to plug things in, whether it's a laptop computer, his phone, or whatever. And then below, we did a couple things. We did some hiding storage back here for longer term stuff. And then, of course, down here is shoe storage, which obviously, as you can imagine, the locker is hooked up to the HVAC system. Athletic training room, um, again, this is baseball only. Our athletic training staff is extremely happy. It's a good size, plenty of room to work. And then the hydro area, obviously, we've got the hot and cold tubs for rehab and post-practice workouts. We have a doctor's office there for any issues that might arise that need some privacy. It's a good functional training room. So now we're here in the weight room. You know, it's baseball only again. This is obviously a very busy place, as you can imagine. All throughout the day, different times, our strength and conditioning coach does a great job and I think we got exactly what he wanted and what he needed. So I think he's uh, extremely happy as well. I love the revolving A, that's very unique. And then the ladder, what are some of the drills and training ideas that go on on these different ladders? Well, I think, you know, Blaine's very creative in, in all of his tactics, but uh, you know, I think he fully utilizes every little bit of this and has a plan every day. I would tell you that he's, he's very creative in his workouts and, and knows how to keep the guys motivated and uh, utilizes the system very, very well. This might be my favorite uh, spot in the entire facility, not because I work out like yeah. that, but because you can see the player lounge from here and also the uh, training area downstairs from here, which yeah. is, again, very functional. You know, obviously there, we were very strategic uh, about the views and uh, you forgot one good view. If you look back behind you, you can see the ballpark. There was definitely some purpose for this room to be here yeah. with the clear story and, and everything back to the ballpark for motivation while the guys were working out. Speaking of, what, what's the activity that the players utilize the most in this player lounge? You know, I think the baseball players uh, tend to, to do pool and ping pong, okay. but I have seen the uptick here in the video game area. Georgia, they just like to hang out. They're a close knit bunch and um, um, you know, this is where they can come after class and whether it's hitting the nutrition area and making themselves a shake or just hanging out with the guys and before practice, I think that they really enjoy it. This is uh, something that Coach Van Horn brought when he got here, you know, 20 years ago or so, and we had to move it from the old locker room. It's something that he's very uh, adamant about having so the guys can touch it on the way to the, to the field. So we're now in the, what we call the pitching development lab. We had a smaller area over on the other side of the ballpark, but uh, we knew that this was an area that we wanted to capitalize in. Probably more technology than anything. And while it looks like a, just a big open space, you know, we have four or five different technology systems in this one area. 
that allow him and his staff to analyze bullpens off of our pitchers here on a day-to-day -day basis. And then on the other side of the wall there is, is just a batting tunnel for game day or for quick reps. The other cool thing about it, George, is that you know we designed it to where we open up these garage doors to try to make the space feel as one. Coach Hobbs can have four guys doing bullpens right here, two on the outside and two inside but it also opens up to the field. There we go with our efficiencies again. We wanted to make sure that, you know, it, it worked. That was the driving force here. So George, now here we're in the uh, team meeting room. This is obviously something that our baseball team didn't have and really thought that it was gonna be a, a useful tool for them where they can all get together and actually have more classroom style talks or whatever, rather than just being sitting in the big locker room and coach trying to address everybody in a circle. This is obviously something that he's able to, to bring up here. Again, we went with the views uh, down into the weight room. You can see down into the PDC as well. If you step back, you can obviously see out in the ballpark. We're in the Razorback baseball offices. We were intentful of putting the offices on third floor for views. The staff balcony that is used during games and recruiting back behind this here and we'll go out there in a second is, is actually our uh, bases loaded landing Mackey's landing club area and it's an indoor outdoor space that we service about 150 fans and they have access up here and uh, it's turned out to be a really uh, popular spot it's got a good atmosphere and feel to it so now we're in the actual indoor space of the deck and patio we were just talking about. This is the bases loaded landing. Our players actually use it for pre-game meals, training table, and I think it turns out to be a great space. It's obviously multi-purpose. Pre-game they'll use it and then we'll turn it around and then it becomes a club for the game. So it, it's it's pretty good stuff. So that's kind of the building, man. It's all right with you. I'm gonna pass you off to Danny from Jack Porter, who obviously done a wonderful job for us, uh, kind of putting the finishing touches on the branding of this building and, and kind of made it what it is. All right, Danny, you guys had a, a big part in making this facility as amazing as it is. What are some of the interactive pieces and elements to this place that make it amazing? This lobby here is really the, the front door to this facility. And so it had to be versatile. So one thing that we have is this really large video board. You can really tailor the content for each of those audiences. I think one of the main things is, is these College World Series trophies. Each has a button that's associated with it that activates content on that video board. There's the 1989 World College World Series. Then we get some images served up for the additional World Series. Let's see if we can get 2018 up there. So again, it just gives these fans a place to really interact with these trophies, see some of that story, be reminded of that history. And then, you know, one of the kind of surprise features is we've got a selfie moment built in. And so there's actually a touch screen here that attaches to a camera that's right over here. And then by touching that, you're able to take a picture of yourself with all of the College World Series trophies. So you can stand up here with your friends, family, and really take advantage of your opportunity here. It's not just digital technology, it's this grand Arkansas baseball here with the backlit letters. And so we're here in the daytime, but if you think about a night game, that's just glowing from the exterior. And so it's kind of this beacon bringing you in, in this huge brand moment. And then if we look up above, there's the Razorback right on the ceiling. So kind of one of those unexpected things. You'd walk in the space, see the video board, see the letters, and then all of a sudden you kind of look up and have that little surprise. As I discussed with uh, Justin, every college athletic program tells the story the way they want to tell the story. Yeah, uh, and these guys want to make sure that they show their big leaguers. You know, they've put a lot of guys in, in the major leagues. And so we really want to represent that volume have pictures for each of those so that again, as the guys are walking in and out to their locker room, they can see themselves on this wall. As far as the design, there's just some subtle details. And so we have these breaks, these, these kind of faceted elements that really capture some of the angles that you'd think of from a Razorback. And so that's really specific to the university and trying to get that brand in here in a, in a subtle and interesting way. Now, as we make our way into the locker room, logos are a very important piece to an athletic program. There's different logos in this area. As far as positioning of them everywhere, is that something you guys uh, decided or did they have input in that? I think it was definitely a collaborative effort of figuring out what the hierarchy is because there are a lot of brand marks in here. That's nice to have a lot of things to work with, a lot of tools to work with, so it's not just one thing over and over again. So we have the classic, the primary word mark here, Razorbacks in the ceiling, which really, again, kind of carries the day, really modern interpretation of it. But at the same time, you have that balance with that classic baseball A. And then some of my favorite things in here are ribby. So having those vintage retro marks on the wall really brings in that kind of classic baseball vibe. 
And then I think that plays really well with, in the lobby you were looking at a lot of sleek, kind of metallic finishes. But in this space, we take it back and we have this raw steel. And that's an element that really speaks to the, you know, when we talked to Coach Van Horn, he really wanted a program that was tough, blue collar, and some of that's kind of representing that toughness there. Now you guys uh, at Jack Porter have worked with tons of college athletic programs. Is there something you guys did for Arkansas baseball that you've never done as far as kind of pushing the boundaries uh, of branding? Well, I think it kind of taps into what I was just discussing. It's just this balance of old versus new. Again, bringing in that classic baseball feel, some of the grittiness of the program that's there, but how do we do that in a really contemporary way that speaks to where the program's going and all the success that's ahead of it as well. Okay, the player lounge, Danny. One thing I'm noticing in here is very grand and big imagery, yep. but then also numbers. You have to showcase your numbers, your history. I mean, you have to have the College World Series appearances in here. And so this is where the guys are spending time. They're coming in and out of the locker room. And it's just that reminder of, hey, this is the end goal. Um, and you can even see, hey, work for it, plan for it, earn it, Omaha. Omaha is the end goal. I mean, it's really tapping into all things that are Arkansas baseball. I mean, here you have the stadium, the field, and this is a one of a kind environment. If you get a chance to come and experience a game here, it's, it's electric. And then playing in the SEC, one of the best conferences in the country here, if not the best, just a reminder who those opponents are. And again, just the, the big time level of ball that you're playing when you're an Arkansas Razorback. It's all about the equipment, it's all about functionality, but we wanted to find those opportunities where we could have those big brand moments, big pops. And so we have the oversized backlit razor back there, which again, if you think about even exterior from the stadium, people can kind of see in here and see that, catch some of that potentially. And then even these light fixtures, that was just a coordinated effort with the architects to bring in some of that movement there, right? We had like kind of the running razor back, capturing some of that speed dynamic around and then having it finished off with Razorback strength there. On the lower level, we're, we're catching some of those leaderboards and that's always a kind of a difficult balance of, hey, these the strength coaches, it's very important to have those guys recognized, but how do we do that in a way that's easy to update and also still blends with the rest of the facility and is really, you know, aesthetically pleasing as well. And then I think there's just that nice little touch on that, that second level there where you have the guys that are framed by that baseball plate all right, Danny, storytelling, branding at its finest here. What went into the thought process of this and how did you include the athletic program's history? A building like this can't exist without the people who built the program, the people who supported the program, the donors who helped fund this project. And so we felt like this was a very unique way to recognize those individuals. So we have the actual objects, the actual baseballs with that recognition piece of those names on there so that they, you know, really feel a part of the building. And again, we're just tying it into that unique baseball story. A similar situation here over here and kind of maybe recognizing a, a different level, but bringing those bats into the design along with the baseball plates. I think it's just a, a great way to recognize those individuals. When we got engaged with this project, we were told that this was gonna set the standard in baseball facilities. It was gonna be the best in the country. And so when we hear something like that, I mean, that's what gets us excited as designers gets the juices flowing. And so we were just thrilled to be a part of this and ultimately I think that's where we landed we had that really high bar and I think if if anything we exceeded it Jeff who goes and builds an indoor baseball stadium this big this is amazing you guys use this every day this building's been here since now 2014 George and Fowler family baseball and track facility coach Van Horn would tell you that during that time when we built this for him he feels like that's when they really got better because rain sleet snow shine whatever the case is this building's available 300 365 days a year besides the infield and obviously live pitching live batting practice essentially they can scrimmage in here if they want you know it's uh, 48,000 square feet of baseball and it's a very functional building the seating here is very dynamic right you have you know your regular typical stadium seating but you guys have a limitless amount of suites other different areas let's kind of run through some of those really quickly obviously we have the normal uh, seating on the perimeter of the field that go from the left field to the right field line there's about seven thousand seats right here that circle the concourse and then we do have the 34 suites as you said we have this area in left field that we call the foul pole patio sometimes we 
do that for special uh, events. And we have what we call our bullpen seats right behind the visitor's bullpen now. And of course, the hog pen is probably uh, what we'd say is one of the most popular. Obviously, uh, a lot of good baseball fans out there that know the game and really are kind of the heart and soul of Razorback baseball in many ways. And then uh, the other thing that we did introduce last year, right before we opened up the Hunt Building, we have 14 loge boxes. So they have their own personal TV, four or five rolling chairs, kind of just a new different type of inventory seat that we were starting to see. You've probably seen it pop up. So we brought it to, you know, Bomb Walker. Well, we appreciate you giving us a tour of the uh, Arkansas yeah. baseball facility. I think this is uh, it's the best one I've seen. I don't know if if we'll be able to follow this up, so. Well, we appreciate it. We're very proud of it and uh, very appreciative of all those that have helped to make it what it is today. So uh, we're very fortunate and we want to take good care of it. And uh, maybe there'll be something uh, special for you to see the next time you come see it.